So we've got our first ring in, and one thing that's important to point out is that each of these clips, obviously they have an open end, that open end needs to either be straight up or straight down. If you have it sitting sideways, it's really easy for these things to work around and then actually pop themselves out. So just make sure that once they're in, that opening is either straight up or straight down. Now that we have our first clip in, we can actually start putting this all together. So it's really important to note that on top of the piston is a small arrow. Uh, some pistons, it'll be a dot, some it's an arrow. Uh, it's just a mark of which side is the exhaust side. On our engine, once this is all built and put together, our exhaust is obviously going to be pointing backwards. And that, of course, is which direction the arrow needs to go. So at this point, we're going to take our wrist pin and I'm going to just put a little bit of lube on the wrist pin. Work that around. That there. We need to have our wrist pin bearing. And our wrist pin washers. And again, I like to use a little assembly lube on the bearing before we even get going. In my opinion, there's no such thing as too much assembly lube. So, the bearing is going to sit inside the crank end. One washer on each side. Just like so. Then what we're going to do is take our piston, remember, arrow facing towards the exhaust. And we're going to slide those in there, making sure everything is retained. We're going to basically try and line that up as best as possible. And with that in place, we're going to take our wrist pin, the side that does not have the clip in it, slide that wrist pin in, wiggle it a little bit till it slides through nice and neat. And there we go. It's basically assembled. All we have to do is put our last little retaining clip in, and we're good to go on that. All right, now that we have our wrist pin bearing and, and our piston installed, it's time to actually get the cylinder onto uh, the bottom end here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to, out of our gasket kit, we're going to get our base gasket. And we're just going to slide this guy on, make sure it's all lined up correctly. It's pretty obvious and self-explanatory how it, how it goes on. And it doesn't matter if that guy flops around, at least not for there, it doesn't matter for the moment. Then we're going to take our cylinder, and our cylinder is obviously going to have to be slid down on. There's a few things that I prefer to do. Again, back to the assembly lube. So I put a little bit of assembly lube inside the cylinder and get that on all the sides. And then I also like to put some around the ring and the ring groove on the piston. So we're just going to put a little on there and go all the way around the piston. Okay, now before we slide the piston into the cylinder, we do need to make sure that the piston ring is lined up properly. On these pistons, there's a small pin somewhere around here. Let's find that. And it's right there. There's a little tiny pin in the groove. That is going to line up with the gap in the ring. It's the only way that the ring can fully compress is around that little pin. So with that, making sure we don't damage our base gasket, get everything into place here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compress this with my fingers as best I can. And remember, the exhaust is going towards the back of the motor. There's our exhaust, so that's going to go towards the back. As we're going to start this, just the slightest angle and it should go right in with almost no resistance if you've got that ring compressed correctly. And that did. It slid right in. Slide it all the way down. Get our gasket into place. Being careful that everything doesn't fall apart as you go. Try and get that lined up as best you can. And slowly slide this down, trying to keep that gasket lined up as we go. Once we're there, should just drop right down. We're good on that. Once we've got the cylinder slid down and in place, it's time to bolt the guy down. So for that, 
we're going to use a little bit of lead red Loctite on these bolts. Again, this is all safety precautions. You don't want these things rattling loose while your engine is running. As well, we also use uh, lock washers on here just for that added sense of security. So a little red Loctite. Drop the bolt in there. Start it down. You don't need to tighten it yet. We got to get them both in. Make sure everything is lined up. All right. So we're just going to snug them both up, just very lightly at first. We're going to rotate the crank, make sure there's no binding anywhere. It sounds, feels good. At that point, we'll go back and tighten these down some more. Again, just go back and forth, you know, eighth of a turn each time. Make sure that the cylinder is going to seat where it wants to seat. And one last one, and they're in there. All right, so our top end's bolted down. It spins freely. There's no binding whatsoever. If you can see down inside the port there, you can see there's plenty of oil to keep it lubricated as we do our assembly, because we're going to have to keep rotating this from time to time, and you don't want any kind of metal on metal contact. You definitely want to make sure it's lubricated. Now that the top end is on and it's bolted down and tight, this is a perfect time to check the squish. The squish is a very, very important measurement in two strokes, quite possibly one of the most important measurements. And there's a really, really simple way to do this. You just need a few special tools, and they're not even that special. You should already have these laying around if you're working on big fist scale cars. One is some simple rosin core or silver solder. Uh, you want to get something that's usually about 30 thousandths at least, maybe even 50 thousandths in diameter. You don't want to go monstrous thick, that eighth inch stuff diameter, that's just way too big. Something relatively small. The other thing you need is a good set of digital calipers. Dial calipers will work as well too, but I prefer digitals. just makes it that much easier to read. What we're going to do is check the squish. The squish is the distance from the top of the piston to the top of the cylinder inside at top dead center. This is important. It really regulates how an engine runs and also determines if you're going to blow an engine up or not. Way too tight of squish is going to give you a lot more bottom end but there's some risks involved in that. And way too much squish uh, it's safer running condition for the motor but too much squish and you're just not going to get any power. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of solder out. We're going to bend just like an L shape in it. You only need about a half an inch of the L. Not, I mean, that's a little bit more and that's plenty. What you're going to do is you're going to insert this L inside the cylinder. The goal being to actually have it touching the inside wall. Once you've done that, and actually what I'm going to do is just cut this off to make it easier to work with. So we're going to insert that in, and then what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the motor by hand. And as the piston comes up, you're going to feel it pinch that solder. So right there, the solder isn't coming out anymore. At that point, you're going to rotate it through, and the solder will come out. And what's happened, and you probably won't be able to see this on the camera, but it's actually squished the end of the piece of solder here. And what we're going to do it's like here we're measuring a regular piece of solder and it's measuring 0.8 millimeter. So we're going to measure the piece that it just squished and it's got us down to 0.6 millimeter, 0.63 millimeter. And that's actually pretty good. I would say the lowest you want to go is 0.5. The tallest you want to go is probably around 0.7 or 0.8. So 0.6 in my opinion is, is just right. 